Good winning walk through Wednesday morning, Eagle fans. You got your Mac and Mac guys, John McMullen and Jody McDonald here with a hang with you on Birds 365. The midweek kind of start to turn the corner and look ahead to the next opponent. So we got ready to rock and roll for you over the next two hours. Appreciate you streaming on in. Um, we'll be here for count two hours, uh, making the most of it, giving you some Eagles insight and info. Quick uh, shout out to the one of the guys on the stream and again uh, we we don't reference the stream often except if you guys blatantly misstate facts about whether john and i said something mm -hmm. uh but the forest shields uh signed in like uh, minutes before the show uh, usually john and i don't even get it. he was already had a stream point up before either you or i jumped in johnny mac uh he wanted to let us know that he's already left for arizona and he'll be staying there through February 12th this year because he has complete and utter faith that that's where the Eagles are headed and going to be victorious when he gets on the plane and comes back east to Far Shield. Don't recognize the name. We got a lot of good regular streamers who are on here every single day, and we appreciate them. Uh, but thanks for getting on early, DeForest. You and I on early, but that's not a problem, John. Do it every single day. And I realized I haven't asked you yet this week. How you feeling? You were fighting a pretty good cold last week. Uh, even gave you a hard time about it. Uh, you uh, closer to a hundred percent? Yeah, I'm closer. I I'm I'm still struggling with the cough. So whatever's going around, it's this constant cough, and that's really why, yeah. Bob Bob Groach was doing the shtick with the mask on uh, on Monday, you know, because there's so much coughing in the press box. It's not just me. There's something going on. Uh, something going around. The flu went away for a couple of years because nobody was worried about it with right. COVID, but uh, now it's back. It's back and it's uh, ping ponging back and forth between people. And um, I'll readily admit I'm just a stone cold idiot. Always have been, always will be. Um, I'm vaccinated. I uh, have taken the proper steps for COVID. I never got a flu shot. Never once in my life. And I didn't get one again this year. I just, uh, I, I saw the reasons why you should be vaccinated. <laughs> But I've never been, a, I don't catch, I just haven't had the flu. Yeah, I, I typically, I haven't had uh, the flu in years. I don't even, um, they told me I had the flu. I didn't feel like I had the flu. I didn't, um, I didn't have fevers or chills or anything of that nature. It was more uh, just the cough. And, just a cough, huh? Uh, you know, bad headache for a couple of days. That's pretty much it. Uh, but, you know. It, it, in the post-COVID world, I'm more concerned about other people than, you know, typically you just work through this kind of stuff. Right. And But now, and you know, people look at you and it's, I always joke, it's like Donald Sutherland at the, uh, at the end of Invasion of Body Snatchers and they point at you and, ah, <laughs> you know, if you're sick. So you feel weird going anywhere when you're sick. At least I do. No, I appreciate you're not giving it to me. Thank you very much. Not yeah. sure that. Yeah. Well, the studio, you're right next to me in the studio. Uh, so. yeah. uh, I don't know how many miles we are apart, but uh, not thank many, you for but, not giving it to yeah. me. All right. Uh, how happy a Tuesday was it in Eagleville yesterday, Johnny Mac? Too happy, man. Too happy of a Tuesday. There's nothing to complain about with this team. There's nothing to complain about with this team. This is the best. Oh, team give, in football. give me a chance. I'll give it well, to you if you I, want I, it. I know I do it all the time, but we acknowledge it's nitpicking uh, for the most part. I mean, look, this is boring to me. I, I say it all the time. It's boring. This team is too good. It's boring. All right. You want it a legit boring. nitpick? I'll start right away. Robert Quinn to the IR. Yeah, that's nitpicking, Five Jody. games played. He's got a grand total of two tackles in 70 uh, snaps played so far in Eagle Green. He has given them nada, zero, <laughs> zip, zilch. And the Eagles did give up, give up a fourth-round pick to get him, which we all understand the value of a fourth-round pick. It's not a first-round pick, but it's not a seventh-round pick. It's right there, snack, uh, right in the middle. And for what they've gotten out of Robert Quinn, they're guaranteed to get nothing out of him for the next four games. It looks like a pretty bad trade. Now, again, big picture, Howie Roseman, the job he's done, maybe the executive of the year. Are we nitpicking over this bad deal? Probably. But it's a bad deal, John. Two two tackles? Yeah, I, I thought it was a deal that wasn't. Robert Quinn? 
even even when they made it, I thought I thought it was unnecessary. Um, now you know they took a swing. You, you're a baseball guy. I, I'm pretty sure nobody's hit a thousand. <laughs> you know, um, it, yeah, it's not a good trade. Uh, they they made a mistake. They probably you know fell into that trap. You 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 heard the narrative about the bad season in Chicago and you seeing all the double teams, which were true. I mean, he did see a ton of double teams in Chicago because they don't have anybody else. Um, and you, and you said you kind of talk yourself into, well, this guy had 18 and a half sacks last year. The drop off couldn't be that drastic. Well, it seems to be that drastic. Sometimes it just happens. And yeah, he wasn't given a much in limited snaps uh, in the first couple games. He was healthy. And then you start talking about the injury popping up on a Friday and, you know, on the week you need a roster spot for Jordan Davis, and they ended up going a different direction, uh, maybe to throw the dogs off the scent. Who knows? Because they need a spot for Avante Maddox this week. Um, if they start, and I assume they're going to start his 21-day practice window uh, at the Bear. You, you mean he's going to be part of the walkthrough today? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I'm, I'm very comfortable good, saying they're going to start test them big time, huh? They're going to start the window. Um, yeah, it's more you know procedural. You have to do it. So, um, but you know the good news is they have the open roster spot because of the manipulation they did yesterday. And um, there's the spot for Avante Maddox if he's ready to go on on Sunday. He's the next one back. So it was Jordan Davis. Um, this week it was Avante. Uh, last week it was Avante Maddox. This week, uh, Dallas Goddard, uh, de- uh, December eighteenth, and Chicago is eligible. Uh, and then you know the the talk is this is not a season-ending injury for Robert Quinn, but you know he could be back for the final regular season game in a playoff Ooh, push. Really? Yeah, let's let's rush him back. You you need his. Half yeah. a tackle again. But I mean, this is the definition of nitpicking. You don't get everything right. The Eagles are close to got Howie Roseman. I'm talking about it is you know pretty good batting average. Yeah, but he got this he, one wrong. He does, but again, I'm going to nitpick the snot out of this. I guess um, to use your continued baseball analogy, in season trades last however many years you want to go back. Howie swung and missed at a couple of times in mid-season trades where you're giving up draft picks for a guy where you're not even guaranteed to get uh, uh you're only guaranteed to get a partial uh part of the season um denard avery this one jay ajayi was certainly a ribby single up the middle that scored an important run but uh in season trades by howie roseman has not been his strong suit everything else has and that kind of outweighs the in-season trades but and just take it in that little narrow focus. That's not what Howie's done best. Yeah, I know. I I, I mean, a per, I, I think the Jay Ajayi trade, everybody points to that as a good one. I think, you know, it was fine. It, it worked, but I think that was overblown. I think the success of that one was overblown. Let, let's put it that way. And I think the, the, the claim that Jannard Avery, I mean, that wasn't a bad trade. I mean, he was here for years and he was a young player on a contract, a cost effective contract. No, it's not a great trade, but he's like a fourth round pick. All right. They gave up a fourth round pick. It's like having a mediocre fourth round pick for a number of years and then you move on. So I think the, 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 the narrative that that was a terrible trade. I think that that's, that's not the problem with Robert Quinn is, you know, this is a, the traditional, we'll stick with baseball. This is the traditional rent a player trade. They didn't, he doesn't have, he's not on his rookie deal like Gennard Avery. He's got a couple years to play for you. This is it. He was brought in for this run to make a, a, a co- contribution to step into the, the role they envisioned for, for Derek Barnett as the fourth defensive end. Um, and it didn't work and, 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 you know, um, you give up a fourth round pick and you could see the history of the fourth round picks on this team. There's some contributors. There's some guys who haven't done much. There's a chance you get a contributor in the fourth round. 
But it's not a catastrophe. Was it worth taking a swing? No. Sure. I think so. No. I think it was worth taking a swing. The, the results are in, John. Unless he comes back for the end of the season and makes a huge play in either week, week well, I think the last week, just again, my opinion, is going to be the JV. So he might get some time because that's where he belongs on the JV with what he's done since he put on an Eagle uniform. Unless he makes a play, gets a big sack in a playoff game, it's absolutely an L. Uh, well, it's out. an L, but I think it was worth the swing. That's what I said. You know, your Hall of Famer will stick with baseball if you if you hit 300, three hundred, three. So you fail seven times. I, but that doesn't mean you sit up there and you take strike th three. You take the swing. I I think it was a worthwhile swing. I think you had a, you missed it. Maybe you fouled it back. Maybe you you, you 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 had a chance to do something with it. You got the evaluation wrong. You bought into the fact that. The double teams, as I said, you know, but I'm, I, you know, I don't typically look at a guy saying, oh, he's going to have 18 and a half sacks one year and he's going to be a disaster the next. It's hard to find that, that comp where somebody falls off the table to that degree in one calendar year. But that's what's happened, you know. Uh, 121 of 122. That's how many uh, defensive ends, edge rushers, edge defenders, uh, PFF grades. He's 121 of 122. The great Alex Wright in Cleveland is the only player worse. And um, most of that is with Chicago. But, you know, he played in Chicago like he was playing here. And there's no need. And they activated Janarius Robinson, who doesn't play. Um, yeah, it didn't work. But I think it was worth the swing. Right. Yeah, you and I have a different definition of worth the swing. You're going back to when he took the swing, the result is in. It's a swing and a miss. So it wasn't worth taking the swing because the result is pretty much etched in stone now. But that's so. what I'm saying. That's my baseball analogy. You're a baseball guy. If, it's, if there's runners on and two outs and you're up, would you rather – Keep the bat on your shoulder or at least take the swing. Now, if you strike out, you strike out. It's not a success. I'm not arguing with you. It's not a success. But the swing is worth it. I'd rather swing. I'd rather try than sit there with the bat on my shoulder. That's my only point. If that swing is a 3-2 pitch and it's six inches off the plate and you swing through it, the swing was not a good idea. Uh, you take ball four and go to first base. Pretty damn easy. Uh, so, again, not a massive thing. Uh, with Robert Quinn sucking as badly as he has, the Eagles are 11 and 1. So, again, keep it in the perspective of what it is. It was a swing and a miss by Howie Roseman. But uh, do you think the uh, kid they're bringing up from the practice squad or activating off the IR, I should say, will actually get time? Do you think he'll be yeah. out? You mentioned uh, they need a uh, roster before. spot. No, he didn't get time before, and they aren't, they're not they only deeper um, since because they added uh, uh, Linval Joseph and Dominic and Sue. Now, they play different positions, but because they have so many bodies now, and this was the problem with Robert Quinn last week, and I brought it up early in the show. I said what they should do is, act, is keep Milton Williams active and let him play more defensive end, even though that's not his natural position. Um, and get the better player on the field uh, and deactivate and not dress Robert Quinn. Turns out they put him on injured reserve. They did uh, play Milton Williams. That's how I think they'll move forward. Um, you'd prefer a more natural edge rusher. I don't think Janarius Robinson is ready to play uh, at a high level. You know, but they want to keep him. I'll, I'll tell you it. If you look at him, he looks like an edge rusher. It's ironic because I said the same thing when the Eagles drafted Josh Sweat, and they both came from Florida State. They're both fourth-round picks. Uh, they both look like they were created in a lab. If you were doing Hollywood, doing a football movie, and said, hey, go get me an edge rusher, you'd pick those guys. They just look like edge rushers. So I think they, they value his potential down the road, but – I don't think he's he's ready to to contribute right now. 
don't think they'll be putting them in there. All right. Um, yes, coming up this week. Oh, but let me ask you about the practice squad first. We got uh, uh, Zach Berman from the Athletic joining us just a couple minutes. I understand practice squad is the fringe of the roster. It's kind of a safety net more than anything else. They made three releases yesterday, so that means they've got openings in the practice squad. Any uh, line of reasoning behind what they did <laughs> when they did it last week? You correctly identified the wide receiver they brought in for a workout and then signed to the practice squad and then released yesterday. Uh, you got any uh, good, uh, juicy rumors as to why they're doing yeah, the I, you know, the practice squad? It, it's interesting. I, you know, we're gonna have Zach on. I want to ask him that question actually. It is kind of weird they're doing so much, um. Uh, churning on the practice squad this late in the season. They brought Anthony Rush back for a week. He's gone again. Uh, Kwan Baker, the the receiver, they tried out. They didn't try out anybody this week um, um, that I saw on the wire. So uh, there's no natural. Now, Andre Sachere, if he clears waivers, um, will be brought back to the practice squad. Um, so you have to see if he clears waivers. But it is... A little bit strange. There's so much churn. Now, they had Anthony Rush here years ago. I mean, they brought him back time and time again. I guess they were a little bit concerned about um, Jordan Davis's ankle. Uh, wanted him around. He's a big inside interior player. Maybe they're comfortable and, and went a different direction. Um, and who knows with these things? I mean... You know, Baker just got here. Maybe they don't like his attitude. I I, I, I shouldn't have said that because people will start. But it could be anything. It's like, you know, you get somebody in the building, you don't like it, you move on. You churn the back end. But it's a little bit It's a little bit strange, the numbers, I, w I will say, this late in the season. Yeah, I was a little surprised by it yesterday. But, again, uh, will it make a difference on Sunday against the Giants, who is – who is or isn't on the practice squad this week? No. Don't think no. so. No. Hey, John McMahon. I'm Jody McDonald. We are the Mac and Mac Birds 365 duo. We're going to add a third voice to the mix. Coming up next, one of the best covers the Eagles on a day-in, day-out basis. Does it for the Athletic. Zach Berman's going to jump in with us here on Birds.